I gotta talk to you guys about running shoes because it happened again. Hey everyone, Steve Gonzer, physical therapist uh, with Run Smart Online. So today's a non-patient day for me, but I wanna talk to you about some patients I had yesterday. This only happened once, but it happens like probably pretty much every week. Um, I talk about, a lot about strength training lately, about these exercises you can do, the, how they can prevent injury and all this kind of stuff. I wanna share with you um, another thing that often causes injury in runners when they don't manage this correctly. So I'm gonna actually go over the whiteboard in a second and talk to you about that. Before I do, I wanna show you this quick email that I got because if you are struggling with injuries, like what I'm gonna teach you in this video can certainly help. And if you're not injured, this video will definitely help if you're running successfully right now uh, to avoid future injury. But I, I got this email I wanna share with you because I, I love getting these occasionally. It helps offset the people who yell at me. But um, so we just had Amy who sent this over and she was a skeptical like you all should be because there's a lot of online people out there these days. She's been running for 30 years um, and she thought she'd seen everything. She moved on to our basics boot camp. So this is our flagship program. Uh, she was dealing with a bunch of injuries. You guys can read through this and pause the video. But fast forward to May 2020. She's a true believer in our workouts. Yay. Um, really believe that saved her running by doing the strength workouts that we we're doing. So. Um, if you're struggling, you want to improve your balance, improve, improve your glute strength, go to the link in this post. But for everyone else, um, I want to go to the whiteboard and show you something because this is the, what I put in this post, right? Uh, but they're so cute. That was what a runner told me yesterday and it caused injury. So let's talk about running shoes real quick because if they're cute and they're not cute, it doesn't matter. Um, let me just turn that around for you. All right. So uh, big thing is about running shoes is that I, I tell people this all the time. Your running shoes are, you just need to be in, in the ballpark, right? You don't need the perfect shoe on your foot, but that's not what this video is about. Once you find a shoe that is really successful, like this runner who just saw me recently, um, she changed her shoes because her shoes were cute. And when you're deciding on your running shoes, you should have multiple shoes in play. By having multiple pairs of shoes, it lets you, your body not experience the same pounding every single time. So I usually talk about uh, when you're picking your running shoes, you have like shoe A. Let me make sure I'm in the frame here. Shoe A is like your go-to shoe. You've been running in it for a while. I'm off to the side a little bit. Um, is your is your go-to shoe, and you're running successfully in this. And if you're gonna have, here's a reason you can have multiple pairs of shoes because if you can have other pairs of shoes that are on the fringes, like we have shoe B, C, and D, and then here's E. You can buy however many sh shoes you want, but as long as all your shoes are like in the same category, you should be pretty successful, but you should have that main training shoe that works really well for you, you know it's successful. Um, and then you just wanna make sure you're like on shoe F, which is out of left field. So you wanna stick in your same categories when you're picking your shoes. What this runner did is she actually did this part right. So she has shoe A that she was running in for a while, but she's like, wow, that's a really cute shoe. I wanna run in that one. And she switched to let's say shoe D here, but shoe D was a huge part of her training right out of the gate. And this is what caused injury. Even though the shoe was okay, it was still how she transitioned. Where's my eraser? Transition to shoe D that is the problem. So I want to talk to you guys about, hopefully this makes sense to you. Let me know in the comments if this does not make sense. But you have a main training shoe. Your other shoe should be in the same category. Usually what I like to do, I don't have a shoe with me, is to bend it, twist it, make sure it feels pretty similar in stiffness with the other ones. But when you're gonna change your shoes and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna get out of these things or maybe you have a shoe that's not working well for you, uh, you're consistently injured with it, here's how you make the transition to a new pair of shoes. I've done a video on this in the past, but it's worth revisiting because someone just got hurt with it, uh, one of my patients uh, recently. What you need to know is that a shoe breaks down over time. So this should make sense to you. Let's go back to shoe A. And shoe A right out of the box is going to be stiff. It's going to be, it's unused. There's no foot strikes in it. So you can think of shoe A having a certain amount of stiffness and flexibility to it. But shoe A at mile zero and shoe A at mile 300 are not the same shoe. I think we can all agree on that. Make sure I'm still in here. So not all, that's, these are not the two same shoes. And what ends up happening is people take shoe A, you're running, you do all your training on it, you're like, oh, I reached X amount of miles, I need to get a new pair of shoes. And even if you buy shoe A again, what's gonna happen is your body's gonna be used to shoe A at 300 miles. And this seems silly, like it's not that big of a deal, but I'm telling you it is. When you go back to shoe A and you start running in it, if you don't transition properly between your shoes, you're gonna, you're gonna get hurt because 
your foot, your body, everything's used to one pair of shoes that is very consistent and very predictable in its foot strike. So here's what I recommend. Um, is that when you make the transition from one pair of shoes to another, whether it's a shoe A to shoe A or shoe A to shoe B, whatever it might be, um, you want to follow this process to make sure it happens. And I can tell you, like, this is the easiest way not to get hurt. I, many, many people, and it's in part of my evaluation process when a runner comes in is when's the last time you change your shoes? Are you due for a shoe change or did you find a cute shoe that you wanted to change into? Um, or did you just jump into a completely out of left field? Did you jump into something crazy? So I always look at a four week transition, week one, week two, week three, week four. You never want to get your shoes to the end of the line where like they are so torched that you can't even run them anymore. You want to be thinking for how much, how much uh, time do I have left in this shoe? Uh, that, that can be variable based on what kind of shoe it is, but we have four weeks and I look at shoe A and let's do shoe B. What I would tell you to start doing is at the end of the four weeks, you should be 100% in shoe B and 0% in shoe A. So if we work backwards from this, I'm going to do, the, do this quick. Yeah, 50, 50, 75, make that legible. So what you're going to do at week one and, and, and over the course of four weeks, you're going to start transitioning. This is totally wrong. Hold on. Wait for it. This is 75, 25, and I thought that was wrong. This is 50, 50. So week one, okay, you're gonna start transitioning your shoes. You're gonna do 75% of your mileage or time running in your typical shoe that you're used to running and only 25% in shoe B. What this does is it starts making that transition where the body can start getting used to shoe B without just making this drastic change. Your body's not gonna like a drastic change. In week two, so this is week one, week two, you're gonna just split your mileage, you're gonna transition into your shoe easily and do 50% of your mileage in your typical shoe, 50% in your mileage in your new shoe, and then you just work your way down. Week three, you're down to 25% in shoe A, 75% in shoe B, and then finally in week four, you're completely out of shoe A. This is super important because it, it seems like a very simple system and your, your tendency is gonna to be to the, the hell with this, I'm just gonna jump in these new shoes, but I want you to just have this in the back of your mind. This is the easiest way not to get hurt when you're changing your shoes. And we do this multiple times a year. While you may get through one or two shoe changes, um, I can tell you a lot of people are getting hurt just by, not because of their training or the fact that they need more strength, just because they hopped in a new pair of shoes and went for it uh, and, and resumed normal mileage. Very simple way to, to help out. Um, if you want some help, more help with your running, check out the link in this post. Strength training is a great way to do that, but this is just another way to uh, help you with your running and to stay out of my office. I'll be back. I actually, I think <laughs> this is funny. So when I'm, when I'm working with my runners, they say stuff. And I don't know if any of you during these videos are like, oh my God, he's like talking about me. Uh, and I always tell them because they come in and they say, well, you watched your video the other day and it's like, you were, you were, that's me. You were talking about me, weren't you? I'm like, no, truthfully, I'm talking about all of you because you all have the same mindset and I do too as a runner. And I just hear the same stuff all the time. So that's why I bring them out and I actually have a list in my phone. I'm like, I'm still like 10 deep on things I need to talk about just from like the last seven days of videos I can do. So um, I'll keep coming live with them if these are helpful. Let me know in the comments if these videos are helpful. I know you guys usually do, but uh, practice this. If you need help with more with your running and uh, some strength training, some training plans, go to the link in this post and I'd be happy to help you there as well. All right, bye guys, have a great day.